In this video, I want to talk about how the marginal likelihood can be very sensitive to the priors that you use in the model. So firstly, what do we mean by marginal likelihood, just to remind ourselves? Well, on the left here, I've just got Bayes' rule, and the marginal likelihood is this denominator term. It's the thing that we use to normalize the numerator of Bayes' rule. And it's just given by, for a continuous parameter vector, the integral of the numerator, which is the integral of the likelihood p of x given theta times p of theta integrated with respect to theta. And remember here that theta is usually a vector, meaning that this is actually a multi-dimensional integral here. So why do we actually want to calculate the marginal likelihood? Well, one of the main reasons is to do model comparison. So the idea here being that what you can do is we've seen we can work out the posterior probability of model one given data and divide that through by the posterior probability of another model, let's say model two, given data. And that's just equal to the inverse of each of those, so p of x given m1 over p of x given m2 times the prior probabilities that we assign to each of these models. So that would be p of m1 divided through by p of m2. And each of these terms in the sort of expression here and this expression here, we actually call the Bayes factor. Each of these terms, the numerator and the denominator, are marginal likelihoods. They are the denominators of their respective models. In fact, you know, when I've written up here p of theta given x, I could have also put comma a given model as well, which would have meant that on the denominator here would have got p of x given m as well. But I, you normally don't do that in Bayes' rule because normally it's implicit that you're talking about one particular model. But in circumstances where you're talking about two or more models, often you include model uh, as a, a extra parameter here, model choice as an extra parameter. Okay, so that's what marginal likelihood is. Uh, what am I going to talk about in this video? Well, what I'm going to talk about is how our calculation or the value of the marginal likelihood strongly depends on the priors that you set on your parameters. And you might say, well, that's unsurprising because it comes in here in the integral. Of course, if I change p of theta, I'm going to change my marginal likelihood. Well, the key thing is that what you can have with marginal likelihoods is you can have a posterior p of theta given x, which is very insensitive to your choice of p of theta, but a marginal likelihood that strongly depends on it. So what we can see is that sometimes if you change your priors, there is no noticeable effect on your posterior or a very small effect on your posterior. However, the marginal likelihood can change significantly. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like using the marginal likelihood as a way of doing model comparison. So I'm gonna show you this by means of a simulation and the example that I'm gonna simulate is we're gonna imagine that we've got some data x and that we are assuming has come from a normal distribution with some parameter mu, a mean parameter mu, and we're just gonna assume a fixed standard deviation of two for the time being. And you know we're gonna imagine that we've got some fake data and I've got actually here data on five individuals, uh, which I've just simulated. And we're gonna assume a prior mu which is uniformly distributed between zero and some upper limit A. And what we're gonna see here is that the posterior that we calculate doesn't really depend on A too much, as long as A gets nowhere near the peak of the likelihood. So we see that the posterior doesn't really depend on A. However, we're gonna see that P of X, which is given by the area under the curve of P of X given mu, times p of mu is going to strongly depend on p of mu. So let me just say that again, the marginal likelihood is going to change significantly as we vary this parameter a, even though our posterior doesn't change at all. And something that I just want to disclaim here, I'm not really a big fan of these type of uniform priors, which have some sort of arbitrary cutoff, which I'm marking here by a. But in this example, it's useful to use such a prior. So now I have a simulation that I've, I've mocked up in Mathematica here. 
And the left-hand panel, we have the prior, then we have the likelihood for our particular data, and the, both of these bottom axes here, or all of the axes on the horizontal here, are mu, our parameter. Then we've got our prior times our likelihood in our third column here, and the marginal likelihood is just the area underneath this curve, so I've, I've written it on here to begin with. And then finally, we've got our posterior on the right. And what we're going to see here is that as I click this button and the prior shift to the right, the marginal likelihood is going to change significantly, but there's going to be very little change in the posterior, illustrating what I was saying before. So if I just let this run now, you can see that as the prior shifts over, in other words, I'm, I'm increasing A, my upper limit of my uniform uh, prior that I'm setting on mu, the marginal likelihood is decreasing significantly, but there is absolutely no change or no noticeable change in the posterior. And just to be clear, this isn't because I fixed the posterior, it's because the posterior just isn't changing noticeably to the eye. Okay, so what can we see here? We can see, well, the marginal likelihood goes from about 4.1 times 10 to the minus six, the absolute numbers don't matter too much, to about one times 10 to the minus six. In other words, it's gone down by a factor of four or approximately four. And so the marginal likelihood has gone down by a factor of four, but the posterior hasn't changed at all. So this example illustrates quite nicely how the marginal likelihood can be very sensitive to your choice of priors. And it's particularly sensitive to priors that are relatively uninformative or weakly informative, say. Because in those circumstances, the priors, changing the priors a little bit, doesn't seem to make too much of a big difference to the posterior. Essentially, your posterior sort of peak, your posterior shape, is being dictated strongly by the shape of the likelihood. In other words, the data is really the thing that is dictating your inferences. So here, changing your priors doesn't really change your posterior, but because the marginal likelihood is given by the prior or the area under the, the graph of the prior times the likelihood or the volume if you're talking about a two-dimensional parameter space or a sort of a hypervolume if you're talking about higher dimensional parameter spaces, then the marginal likelihood still does change significantly as you change your priors. And to me, that's one of the reasons why I don't like using marginal likelihood to do model comparison.